I really like odd time signatures. And I like really odd time signatures. So here's my guide on composing and performing odd time. I'm gonna assume that you already know what time signatures are and what the numbers mean and all that. And as a final preface, I wanna make it clear, I am not offering a magical six pack abs in a week solution. You have to practice if you want to get better and you should listen if you wanna become more musical. So let's begin with a fact. Any integer greater than one can be equaled by a sum of twos and threes. This is something you might have heard before, and it's definitely the most important fundamental step in being able to play odd time. You want to play groupings of two and three subdivisions to add up to your numerator, and rarely will you count all the way up. For instance, seven, eight might be counted as one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So we have two groupings of two followed by a grouping of three that adds up to seven, but we never actually say the word seven when we count it. At the composition stage, you should and inevitably will think of time in this way, but eventually you're going to want to get away from all the subdivisions and start feeling the pulse on its own with short and long beats. For that version of 7-8, we would have short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. This is important in becoming proficient in a time signature. When I'm improvising in 7-8, I'm rarely thinking about all seven subdivisions. Normally, I'm just thinking about that pulse just like you would normally just think of the pulse when you're improvising in 4-4. Four, four. You're not really thinking about all the 16th notes or all the 8th notes. You're just feeling the 4-4 four, four pulse. Pro tip! Hit your collarbone. It helps. The pulse, however, is not the end. To really become fluent in a time signature rather than simply proficient, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with various rhythms that exploit all of the subdivisions. In 7, you might play a rhythm like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, the number of internal rhythms like this goes up exponentially as the time signature increases, so you don't need to learn them all, but learning some will help you to get new ones more quickly. You also want to learn different accent patterns, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, one of the reasons that rhythm in particular is kind of hard is because there's no way to feel the pulse such that you hit all three beats. And if you're too dependent on the pulse, that can become troublesome. Off beats in general are harder in odd time than normal. And for that reason, among others, practice with a metronome. You should practice with a metronome in any time signature, but it's even more important, not less, in time signatures that are odd because the extra cognitive load makes it easier to slip out of time and harder to realize when you slip out of time. Melodies and repeated phrases should be ergonomic in the time signature for a given instrument, and you should use harmonic motion so that playing the time signature incorrectly makes less harmonic sense than playing it correctly. Here's an example of a repeated phrase that does this well in 11-8. I can play this pretty fast because our last eighth note is a leading tone right back to the beginning of the lick. Playing the five, then the seven, then the one is a really standard and simple harmonic move, and that helps to counterbalance the rhythmic oddity. A much more difficult repeated phrase might be something like this. The harmonic relationship between these notes is totally discordant with the rhythm. There's no dominant whole step or half step back to the root at the end, and all that makes it harder to play and maybe even to enjoy. For bigger time signatures, getting into the teens and higher, you want to have layers of subdivision. So you subdivide your time signature into fours, fives, sixes, and sevens, and then those are further subdivided into short and long beats, or twos and threes. For 17, for instance, you might feel it as seven plus five plus five, where the seven is short, short, long, and the five is short, long. Ostinatos. 
are fun and have a lot of uses in the world of Odd Time. First of all, they can make Odd Time danceable. It's pretty hard to dance to Odd Time, at least for Westerners. See Adam Millie's phenomenal video on 9-8 for more on that. But adding an ostinato to a 5 or a 7 feel will give you an isochronal or constant pulse that you can dance to. 9-8 is also one where you can do this, although 9-8 doesn't need an ostinato necessarily uh, because you can feel it isochronally to begin with by using three long beats, basically 3-4 with a triplet subdivision. The other thing is the ostinato comfort test. If you can, at the same time, play an odd pulse and a half note ostinato on your first try, that demonstrates that you are pretty comfortable with that odd pulse. Now, it's a one-way implication, so not being able to play the ostinato on your first try doesn't mean that you're not comfortable with that pulse, but it doesn't help your case, and playing ostinatos over odd time is fun, so, you know, it's probably worth practicing. Now, this is the most important point for long-term growth. Address your weak points. If you're kind of new to odd time signatures, focus in on five and seven. Really get good at feeling the standard pulses of five and seven and doing that effortlessly. And that'll set you up really nicely for bigger time signatures that use those in those layers of subdivision. Some of my weaknesses are pulses that start with or have a lot of long beats. For some reason, I'm just a short beat dominant kind of person. I think maybe that's a lot of people, but for me, that's certainly the case. Like that 11-8 groove from earlier in the video, I still have to think about the subdivisions in my head if I want to play that and be confident in it, you know? I have to think about the subdivisions. I can't just really feel it that well. I also just need to work on my fluency in five and seven in general. So here's a quick summary. Use twos and threes, or short and long beats, instead of counting the whole thing. At first, you'll have to count the subdivisions individually, but eventually you should be able to just count the pulse without thinking about that. Tap your chest or collarbone, practice with a metronome, ostinatos test you so hammer weak points as you go try to rap in 7-8, kinda hard but kinda great, didn't mean to start this, but script writing just has a way, oh, a breath that's important and is too, remember for your melodies, ebb and flow with graceful these. yes that was the lick, but it's 7 is so slick, and I'm selling no false tricks, so go practice, practice, and thanks a lot, for watching, an extra thank you to my patrons, <laughs> see you next video, bye.